Hello, good evening, and welcome to another edition of uh, Sports Ultras here, live on TFM 92.7 with Muriel Kwampofo. You know what time it is. Uh, for the next one hour, uh, 15 minutes, we'll be here right with you to talk about a number of issues. Top of the list is the Black Stars. Uh, what exactly is happening? We know the international break is over, but it's been about the reaction. Everyone seems to have found their mojo. All of a sudden, the Black Stars players know how to play football. My panel would be joining me to explain what exactly is the voodoo with the Black Stars team at the moment. Why is it arrived before the international break? The players are at a high level, come to Ghana, they drop in their level right after the level increases again. It's becoming a very dangerous and unwanted pattern that we're seeing with the national team. So today we'll try and dissect that and see what exactly is happening. If it's not the players, is it a fault of the GFA? Is it a coach? Is it a pitch? Is it just playing in Africa? What exactly is wrong with these players? We'll be trying to get answers. And then we would also do something really interesting because we would hear from you at home, whether in your car, wherever you are, what you also think about the situation and so we'll open the phone lines much later on the show you can share your thoughts on the national team what exactly you think is wrong why the players perform in their clubs but they're not struggling to replicate that here when they come to play for the black stars then we'll talk about the ongoing wafu competition the black satellites uh, seem to have redeemed themselves uh, beating niger by two goals to nil after they drew their first game with benin 2-2 and so things are looking a bit good for Desmond Affairs, man, and they've calmed down the situation at least for now. And then there's also more action in the Ghana Premier League. Asante Kotoko returned to action. Hard to folk back to default settings as they do near no away to Dreams FC. And what a weekend of Premier League football. Arsenal losing, Bilishen sad, and uh, Manchester City leaving it late. Uh, Liverpool proven that they are once again up there as they retain their spot on the top of the English Premier League table. So there's a lot to talk about today. You do want to stay with us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back from that quick break. You're still live here on Sports Entres. You can stream live on Facebook at 3FM 92.7. And uh, just as promised, uh, I'm joined by my guests. Very familiar faces, Billy Shen and then uh, Fifi Forsen. Also known as Epson. Bill, how was your weekend? How are you feeling? Um, you don't look too happy. Hmm. <laughs> hmm, Black, hmm. Black Stars. Black Stars already gave me a bad week. And then asked <laughs> now to lose in the weekend. Well, why? 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 You, you know, I, have, I have a parable for you. Uh-huh. What shall it profit a man uh-huh. to get malaria? And miss two nil defeat to Sudan only hey. to go and get another two nil this time at the vitality. Hey. Hmm. What shall it profit a man, Bilishen? I ask you hmm. because in the end, you chop the two goals. Hmm. <laughs> Things for you never lost. I, 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 if I speak, I'm in big trouble. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was just a joke, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's good to have you guys here. Asin, how are you feeling? Uh, good weekend for you? You're managing, yeah. Fantastic week. weekend. Y- you so can't far. really tell how your weekend goes to your team plays. And you know, Asin is a oh. bit confused because Barcelona are now about to play. Has a flick ball. <laughs> Easy win. Easy I'm, win. I'm, Easy win. I'm Gabi told- is back. Omo is back. Everybody is back. Fit and ready. Gabi is back, but it's Eric Garcia who starts in midfield. Yeah, must be nice. Yeah, thing, we don't care who starts. <laughs> As far as we have Hansi Flick on the bench, yeah. already we have we have one go in the bag. Yeah. Before even the game starts. Yeah. So that's one go in the bag. Yeah. Yeah. Sevilla could hmm. end up collecting like five or six today. Wow. Yeah, Se- Sevilla have not been good. Yeah. They've not been good at all this season. Wow. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so let's head into it and start from the camp of the Black Stars. Very, very interesting weekend. Personally, personally, I, I saw this coming. I don't know whether you guys also did. Because it's not the first time that we're seeing this, that Black Stars players come, perform not so well, and then they go back to their clubs and all of a sudden they are world beaters. We've seen that in... Maybe the degree this time is much higher because it was a lot more players involved in 
goals especially in the premier league and then in la liga as well even across other leagues in europe first question to you bill is does it come as a surprise to you to, to see the players do this and do you think it's deliberate it's not surprising anymore really is not um I think we've we've been at it over and over again that these players show very good form in Europe, but when they come to the Black Stars, it's a different issue. We've made that case about Inyaki, we made that case about Semenyo, uh, Kudus a number of times too, because this year he hasn't really been good for the Black Stars. After Egypt, of course, which he did well against Egypt scoring the brace. But after that, it's not really been good. Uh, even Jiku is now Mourinho's, basically Mourinho's child. <laughs> but even he is not doing well. Salisu, we saw him at Monaco. And, I mean, we were praising him. He's fit. He's in the best shape of his life. And he's even scoring in Champions League. Comes to Ghana and Abdul Rahman beats him in a foot race. And basically let him look like a, a, a League 3 defender. It's... I can't... I can't... I can't put my finger on it as to why this is happening. Because there, there are a number of factors. One could be the coach and how he sets his team up and how he sets the players up to try and link up. Because again, uh, for example, we bash Thomas Party a lot because even when he's in the Black Star squad, because the perception is that he doesn't perform as well in the Black Stars as compared to Arsenal. But then again, in an Arsenal system, there are lots of players running in front of him and putting themselves in positions where he can put a very good pass and he looks all good. And Arteta trusts him in such a way that he can intercept, he can break up play and all of that. The system is there for him to succeed. Is it the same in Ghana? I doubt it. Is the system an Atletico Bilbao for Inyaki Williams to succeed, the same in Ghana, absolutely doubt it too. Even Jordan Ayu, is it the same? I don't think so. I mean, we are not going to talk about him complaining to Kwesi Apia because we don't know what he said. <laughs> but it's become more of a theme that the players have skill sets, but it doesn't look like they've been placed in a way where their skill sets can be maximized for the team to get results. And that is a huge concern. Very huge. And of course, people have talked about passion, about commitment. Yeah, maybe we are not seeing that too. Because there's been instances where the Black Stars who can see the players are already acting like there's no, there's nothing to lose. There's, they're not behind. They don't have to score. We've seen instances, but there's also that instance where they have not been pleased in such ways where their skill sets, their profiles are maximized. And that is a huge problem for me. Mm. Very huge problem because it's a recipe for disaster. If, if you stand your ground and you want, if you, are, you have a system where you want to play, you know the players of the profile to fit that system. That would mean some players will be sacrificed, even if, in the eyes of the people, they are so great and can do some things. That is what the best coaches in the world do. Ateta can easily decide to sacrifice Aubameyang because he was messing up as captain, even when he, even when Aubameyang was scoring goals for Arsenal. He decided to sacrifice Genduzi when he came first and he was one of the best midfielders in Arsenal's team even though he was so young because he had a system he sacrificed Lucas Torreira because he had a system so why aren't we seeing that where you are basically jamming up so many ingredients but are not aligning the ingredients to the best of their abilities for the meal to be sweet or for the meal to be good i feel that that is like a, that is a case where that is a case that we should really really scrutinize we should really ask questions and again what is really the system of the black stars 
Let me go further. What's the DNA? I can't tell what the DNA is. In fact, we've not really been given access to the book to, to even read what the DNA is. I can send it to you. Please send it to me. <laughs> can, but can you tell me what the DNA is? It's supposed to be a mixture of... Um, the, the idea is not a system per se, but we're supposed to dominate games. We're supposed to impose ourselves. We're Are supposed you? to create environment where our players can express themselves. But the most important thing is that we need to set up in a way that we want to dominate, have the upper hand. And so, yeah, I think that's basically what, what I remember. It's not a formation thing. It's more of a how we approach games. How yeah. we approach games. Are yeah. we seeing that? Nope. Okay. So, basically, we are not translating the DNA the way it should. Then what's the point? <laughs> the, the man that wrote the DNA crowd, where is he? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been let go. <laughs> he's been let go. And he left a document for us, which we can't even, we can't even execute. So, I mean, well... It's frustrating. Yeah. Well, a lot of things to unpack. Uh, let's just quickly go for this break. When we come back, we we'll head straight back into it. The luckiest star 712 hash. Luck is everywhere for everyone. Yeah. Here's to the friends who dialed star 712 hash and found no regrets. To the investors who struck gold. To the health workers who diagnosed luck with precision. To the tough guy who couldn't hold back his tears. To the passionate fan who couldn't contain his joy. To the seamstress who turned her hard earned stitches into a of happiness and now here's to you your next big win is right here Dial is star 712 hash. Now join in the luckiest winning celebration. Every 1st July 2024. Uber Dial is star 712 hash. Now I can swap to ticket you know, as a group, individual, and now as a, even as a community. Now we need to see cashier. Prices are cashier in the community draw or go for the grand draw on the 30th of November 2024. Unlock your luck with star 712 hash. Now join in the winning streak now. The luckiest star 712 Ash. Luck is everywhere for everyone. Yeah, the luckiest. Welcome back. You're still live here on Sports Ultras on TFM 92.7. We're talking about the Black Stars. Yes. The players, the players, they've been all of a sudden they look like they're good again. Uh whether by in a period of one week against Sudan, they could even get a goal against Kesiapia Sudan. And then right after the break, we see the way it happened was too funny. Kudu scored, Inaki comes in with the brace, and then Fatawa says Jordan scores. And Osman scores. Osman. Who, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Osman scores yes. in the evening. And then even today, Barbara Mana scored, but he wasn't part of the squad. And then Gideon Mesa has also assisted. Hey! And I mean, the list goes on and on. There are even players who are not in the Black Stars yet, like Edmond Bedou, I read Bruce Hausberg, who also scored. But it's been, generally, it's been a good weekend. And I think the biggest indication or the biggest takeaway for me this weekend is that it has never been about quality. Look, there are it's fair that every national team sees this period goes down a bit before it comes up it's, hap- it's happened to a number of them ivory coast nigeria yeah. egypt everyone goes through this tough period what makes it harder is in these periods when you look at the talent pool that you have and you're not seeing anyone nobody good enough nobody playing the top league mm-hmm. and you're wondering mm-hmm. who's going to be your savior how are things going to change for you? That type of situation, there's really no hope. But for Ghana, I think like our situation is very, very different. I look at the pool of players we have, and there's so much hope. I don't think in the last 10, 12 years, we've had this number of active players in the top five European leagues who are not just playing a part, but actively being important players in their team. And I think this weekend was... A very good reminder mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we have quality. I hear talk about passion and commitment. And I, I ask anybody who says that, you, you sitting at home, do you think you want to watch Ghana at an AFCON more than Kudus wants to play at an AFCON? Or Inaki Williams 
Look, do you think Inaki didn't see what Nico did for Spain and doesn't want to replicate our Ghana? Mm-hmm. Do you know the immense... Look, forget about club football. Look at Messi. Mm-hmm. Where did he get his biggest joy? What didn't Messi win with Barcelona? Mm-hmm. Your biggest joy as a player comes from your national pride. And there's no play... Look, even whenever you speak to any player, you ask them of their idol, they would mention a Ghanaian player first. These guys grew up watching the national team and want to play in the... It is never a question of passion. Everyone understands the privilege that they have. Yeah. To represent this big country... It's no joke. Yeah. But I don't think it is passion and commitment. Look, if that's the same case, then what would you say about Messi before Copa America came in 2021? Yeah. What didn't Argentines say about Messi? Mm-hmm. That he only cares about Barcelona and he doesn't do the same for uh, Argentina. When you're not winning, when you're not winning, people will say everything else. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine people questioning Messi's passion and commitment for Argentina yeah. when he wasn't winning? Yeah. But now, all of a sudden, because he's winning, he's yeah. passionate. Yeah. No, he's not. The only thing that changed was that they got a coach who understands the system and how to get the best of the players that they had. Mm-hmm. Scaloni came in and changed absolutely everything. Yeah. It's the same way. One factor, one factor can change with this national team mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, everything will take again. And everyone will forget about passion conversations. Yeah. I don't think it's an issue of passion. And commitment at all mm-hmm. at all i just think we need a, look look at the goals that they scored this weekend yeah we had more than 25 corners against sudan in two games who would give jordan that pass on the edge of the box that harry wings intelligently saw and gave it to him yeah no one who that. would try and find inaki in the box consistently like bilbao do mm-hmm. Even Kudus himself, how many times do we create opportunities for him like he, the goals that he scores at West Ham? Mm-hmm. Who is moving inside the box? Who is telling Fatal to be going down the line? Who is telling who to do what? And if you watch Salisu at Monaco, why would you even want to play him as a defender who is literally on the halfway line and is playing a high line and has so much distance to cover? Mm-hmm. That's not his strength. Mm-hmm. It's almost like telling Maguire to play a high line. Yeah. There are defenders who defend better in, when they are deeper. Yeah. There are some who defend better on the high line. You need to understand the strength of your players. And I think that's the biggest difference here. Coaches outside there understand the strength of their players and then they bring the most out of them by doing this understanding. Here, it's almost like you just put everything together. Mm-hmm. The same, look, the greatest player of all time, Lionel Messi, was struggling in Argentina. Mm-hmm. It's not because he wasn't good, because the system wasn't good. And you see, no matter how good you are, no matter how good, if Messi could not survive a system, Kudus cannot. Inak, nobody in this world of football can survive any system that's not good. Yeah. So till we find a way that we bring the best out of our players, the situation there to me to continue happening. Fifi, I don't know whether you agree with me. I think you believe that the players should do more. Yeah. I- I've, I've been very critical of the players yeah. in the last two weeks. I've, I've said that, irrespective of what happens off the field, I expect them to show more. Yeah. But from what has happened this week, you have to just admit that it's clearly a system problem. And I just feel what Utuado said back in August is transmitting now. And I... Can you remind us? He said national team football is difficult. National team, coaching at national team is difficult because the players come from all over the world, yeah. come from different philosophies and all that. And from what I've seen this week, it's, it just clearly tells me that maybe, maybe Otto is not really a national team coach. Maybe he's more accustomed to club football. Like, like Hansi Flick? Of course. Because you've seen good coaches yeah, here. Yeah. Because I, I just feel national team and club football are very different. And if you look at Otto's role at Dortmund, he was more involved with the talent aspect of the players. He, he knows, he knew how to scout the best players and all that. But he, he comes to the national team and he has to, he basically has to do a lot of things. He has to map out the strategy, the tactics and all that. But then you, you could clearly see that if he falls short at some point. As you rightly mentioned, you have to know your, the profile of the players you invite. Because one thing that struck me from the two games against Sudan was that when the going got tough and when he needed a goal, he brought in a player who received a late call-up. 
that was my Kobedu. Mm-hmm. And then I was asking myself, so what if party hadn't pulled out? Or what if, yeah, what if, because clearly, I think Bedu, the GFA statement said Bedu was just coming to replace party. Yeah. So what if party hadn't pulled out? What would he have done? And I've said that the system problem also trans, transmits and it also has to do with the management problem from the top. Because after, our, for, after the AFCON, we came to conclusion that, okay, the technical team was in, wasn't good. And this is a technical team that was headed by a former Premier League manager, yeah. Chris Hutton. Yeah. And we had George Boateng. Yeah. We had Masoud Dudi Dramani. Yeah. And the goalkeeper's trainer, I believe, was Richard, Richard Kinson. Yeah. And I think a week after the AFCON, the committee that was put in place, they came up with five qualifications. And if you remember, mm. one of the qualifications was 15 years experience. Yeah. Having and having the highest you were having the highest coaching license, license yeah. and also being a proven winner yes proven winner between between national and club football mm-hmm. and i asked myself how did otto manage to secure this job hmm. unless the gfa wants to tell esther and i think they tried to explained it and they, they explained it in a way that for me sort to just confirm that maybe they didn't get they didn't get the applicants they were they were hoping for didn't they say they had, they had like, like over 200 women? yeah no you can have over 200 <laughs> but who were they you see because the, the moment i feel i've gone through the qualifications again I, and i feel the management committee at that time that were taxed to appoint a new co- at that time i feel they did a thorough analysis of why the blast has failed mm-hmm. and they came out with those five qualifications because if you look at this, those five qualifications on Reku, if they are stick to that i tell you we will not be losing to sudan because if you want a proven winner someone who knows f- who has 15 years experience Otto has let's say Otto started coaching in 2010 that's 14 years experience Fair enough. He has what's the name? He has the UEFA Pro license. That's the highest, yeah. I believe, in the in the coaching certification. Yeah. That's fair. He has the he has the qualification. Yeah. But what did the GFA say when they appointed Otto? They said Otto excelled. He was excellent during the interview process. Already, that defeats the qualification that they put out there. Meaning, they snubbed what they what they put out there. And chose the manager based on what his excellence during the interview. And I feel it was just a matter of time that this was going to backfire. And for me, I just also think Otto's second term has, has not been encouraging, has not been impressive because of his backroom staff. <laughs> yeah, because Uruk, in his first stint, he had George Watton. He had Chris. He had Didi Dramani. He had Chris. He had Chris Hutton as technical director. Yeah. He had Olivi. These are four top brains. Yeah. And who did we give to him? <laughs> Joseph. I said Joseph. <laughs> John Pencil. John Pencil. <laughs> Lawman. I believe the name. Yeah, Lawman. And Fatou Dauda. Yeah. Fatou Dauda actually had to quit Sudan yeah. to come and take this job. Yeah. Meaning they didn't have any anyone available or they didn't even want to go back to Willili. So if you said the previous technical team wasn't good enough. What shows this technical team is an upgrade to what you sacked? Mm-hmm. It's clearly not an upgrade. There's no way you can tell me, put, you can compare pencils, pencils coaching to, to George Watson. Watson is ahead of pencil. Mm-hmm. What about, about Olele and Fatal? Olele is ahead of Fatal. <laughs> and it was evident during their playing time. We, we saw how both play for the national team yeah so clearly we downgraded and when they're going guest off, who does auto rely on Lama. if he looks back who is he going to consult let's be fair because i feel auto in the second stint the management didn't do the best for him yeah that's that's for me but i also feel he has to 
take majority, he has to take majority of the blame because he has been there before. For someone who has been there before, you shouldn't be struggling because majority of these players, you worked with them at the 2022 World Cup. Yeah. You worked with Jiku, you worked with Salisu, you worked with Kudus, you worked with a lot of these guys. So how come it's literally the same squad, you can't find the right system this time around? And it's clearly a system problem because in the game against Sudan, in the second leg in Libya, there was a time when there was there was an instant when you were watching the game, you kept screaming, where are the options? Where are the midfielders? When this guy, this Cal- Cagliari, I, I believe, the Ibrahim Suleiman, Suleiman yeah. Yeah. he had the ball in the middle and he held on to the ball for like 50 seconds. <laughs> he had no option, no one to pass to. You see, so this is what we have to address and I feel the management have done it a great disservice. I, I just feel, I don't want to generalize the issue. I don't want to say Ghana football is, is sinking and all those. Because it is clearly, the Ghana football is not sinking. I've, I've, I've maintained it. It is clearly a Black Stars problem. And the management are failing us. Because they appoint the coaches. Because, let's, let me, so that if I should take you back to 2019, you sacked with Yapia. You said you wanted an upgrade. Mm-hmm. You wanted us to step up the national team. You suck with Yapia and you bring in CK Akono. <laughs> mm-hmm. To be fair, they corrected it. They, 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 they brought in Milo. Milo. Yeah. But it turned out that Milo... Me, me what? <laughs> no. But no. But Mi, Milo, the, the Milo, the, the no. second coming of Mi, yeah, Milo. Yeah, I understand you. But on the face it's of... It's never what, an upgrade of, on yeah, CK Akono. No, no. To, to, be, to be fair, for what he had in done... In terms of high-profile jobs, what no. CK Akono had done with Kotoko seven years ago, Milo... Milo after before yeah, Blasters, Milo was saying. no one. That's what I'm after saying. Blasters, Milo was no one. No, but but to be fair, on his CV, he had led it to the okay. quarterfinals. Okay, wait. So I'm saying so let's, it turned that, out to that be was that. that was how many years ago? Was yeah, like that was 13, like 13, 14 yeah, so years I'm, ago? That's what I'm saying that it turned out to be that Milo has had lost touch with reality. Yeah, he had, the game, the he game had lost touch with the game. The game, the the game, game had, had left had, him. Had left, us, Thank had left him behind. Yes, yeah. And we brought in Otto. No, Chris. No, no, no. We brought in Otto. After Milo, we brought in Otu for yeah. the World Cup. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for me, he did an encouraging job. He did well. And I would have said that he did an encouraging job because of the background staff, because of the people we put behind him, the supporting cast. Yeah. Had a good spot. For Hilton, I, I just feel it, it was never going to work for Hilton as the head coach because clearly he didn't even have the support of the people at the top. So, you see, if you get one manager appointment wrong, yeah, it's fair. But how can you get it wrong for three, four times? Because who who in their right senses mm-hmm. watches Chris Hilton's coaching career and decides that? So, so that's, this is why I mentioned that after Hilton, they knew they had to get the second appointment absolutely right. Because that's why they put out the qualifications. That thing wasn't a fluke. They knew what they were doing. They had done a detail. I just thought they did a detailed analysis and they realize but why why the number 15 to be honest because if you are strictly going by those requirements there will be less than 10 coaches available for the job no but i, I no you see I've never that's said that that's how they I down that. That <laughs> <laughs> no but Orik, 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 at, at that point yeah, i feel that's what we needed we needed a serial win we needed someone who had won it before to come in because if you exit the afcon back to back group stages Clearly, you need, you need an upgrade. You need to upgrade. No, but you see, we, we need to hold these people accountable. Yeah, in accountable. those In these five years, we've had managers like Heavy Renard, Hugo Bruce, all become available. Yeah. And also, all linked and also, also in all interest. Yes. interest. Yeah. And you see, my point is that those years ago, they were attracted to the job because of the pedigree of Ghana. Yeah. The more we are failing, the more these jobs move further away from us. Look, it, Heavy Renard declined Nigeria. Nigeria in this state to all their strikers, what makes us think you come to Ghana? The lower you drop him, the more further you move away from these high-profile coaches. Nobody wants to associate himself with failure. What, what shows I can save a sinking ship that has seen four or five coaches trying and it doesn't work? That's what I'm saying, that it was critical. It was critical that we got this one right. At least for the sanity of the Black Stars, just maintain normal standard. Mm. Go, go back to round of 16 of AFCON, AFCON quarterfinal. Yeah. Show something. Show some good potential. Yeah. Now, if you don't go for, if you don't qualify for AFCON, you are in the gutters. Which coach will take this job? Say, Nobody. Say, it's almost say, become say, like say the Manchester Trump. United job. Uh, yeah. Nobody wants to go there. Yeah. 
It's not because they are afraid, but it just doesn't make sense. If if you read, look, you think Tuka wouldn't have loved to go there? My United is a huge club, but everything seems like years ago, and the problem seems so huge that you go there thinking that can I really fix it? Should I take that risk? And at a point, these coaches think of themselves. Hey, after what if I go and I fail? It's a monumental failure because you know yeah. this is a very big club or this is a very big country. They don't yeah. want to stain their CVs. Yeah. Right now, right now, if you like Sakoto and put a job available, you will be getting Abu Bakar Watara them apl- applying. That, seriously, yeah. if you are looking at the current state of the Black Stars, yeah. which coaches do you think we can attract? Same, same fear to even uh, reject us. Uh, uh, yes, and quickly, usually, we, reject. To, we have to, to also honest, reject. Go back and let's say have to also rob in the ministry because I think in the last since 2019, I think there has been some. I, I had reports that. There's a cap for national team coaches and like the payments and the monetary, the salary that they, they want to pay. And they don't want to go beyond $50,000. Oh, I'm then, sorry. Then, 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 then. I'm sorry. We can't, yeah. we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't, there's, there's no way you're going to get a top coach if you yeah. don't want to go beyond $50,000. And these are the results you're going to get. But $50,000 is not drawing with Sudan and losing to Sudan, no. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Fifty thousand no, dollars at least we should be. Yeah, yeah, at least. <laughs> we're beating Niger. <laughs> no, for real, I'm saying that if you if you want to attract the heavy runners, you have to pay more. At least hundred. And, uh, and now say one fifty. Let's let's be honest with ourselves. There's no way heavy Renard is going to bottle an Afghan qualification. He's not going to bottle an Afghan qualification. He's going to qualify with ease in a group that had that has Angola, Niger, and Sudan. He's going to qualify with ease. I've, 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 Anyways, let's just go for this quick yeah. break and then when we come back, we'll uh, continue. It looks as if the conversation is getting more engaging. Stay, stay with us, especially um, those of you listening and streaming with us live on Facebook. I'll be putting out the phone numbers soon. You can also join in. Let me know what you think the biggest factor is. Why our players are forcing outside. They are doing better when they go to their clubs. Are we seeing another era? of the English national team when they had the likes of Lampard, Gerard, Scholes, Rooney, and they couldn't even have any decent tournament. The luckiest star seven one to us. Luck is everywhere for everyone. Yeah. Here's to the friends who dialed star 712 hash and found no regrets. To the investors who struck gold. To the health workers who diagnosed luck with precision. To the tough guy who couldn't hold back his tears. To the passionate fan who couldn't contain his joy. To the seamstress who turned her hard earned stitches into a bundle of happiness. And now, here's to you. Your next big win is right here. Dial star 712 hash. Now join in the luckiest winning celebration. Every 1st July 2024. Over dial star 712 hash. Now I can swear to take it through as a group, individual, and now as a, even as a community. Now we need to get cashier. Prizes are cashier in the community draw. Or go for the grand draw on the 30th of November 2024. Unlock your luck with star 712 hash. Now join in the winning streak now. The luckiest star seven one to us. Luck is everywhere for everyone. Yeah, the luckiest. Welcome back. You're still live here on Sports Ultras on 3FM 92.7. It was getting pretty heated uh, with regards to the Black Stars and the players. I think, Bill, you wanted to make a point before we went on the break. Yeah, I mean, the coaches matter. I think now the, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the management are probably considering to maybe let Otto go. But again, it will be a very big indictment on them. As Not them. On Mark Addo. Oh, and, and Ket. No, no, no. This one, I want to exclude Ket. Ah, okay. So, Mark Addo. Ket gave executive power to, to Mark, Mark Addo to lead the team to search for our coaches on about three different occasions. Yeah, three. Hey. Three. I'll give you the exact... I'm coming. I wrote it down. Hey. I'll give you the exact times that oh, he... the, the Mercado, Charlie. No. Because you see... But, but again, I, 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 I'm trying to understand why... If you are if you are tasking like a group, only one of them is a technical head out of five. 
Meaning, how, 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 what, how does Mark Ado have any experience yeah, in choosing yeah, a coach? Yeah, meaning, meaning, meaning like four voices versus one. Even if the technical head has like a very good This time idea. I had Professor Mintai. Yes, he oh. was the only technical head in the, in, the, in the five. So if there's a vote? Yes. They will outweigh him easily. So, so I think the process itself is flawed. If you are going to pick a committee and also if you pick a coach, if, why you because usually what I understand is from top top clubs, when you are picking the coach, the coach will bring some of his backroom staff himself, does he not? He will bring some. Like yeah. even if he doesn't bring all, he will bring some. And uh he'll keep one one who maybe has been with the team for a long time and you know wants the transition to be smooth and all of that. Was there that sort of room given to Otoado? Or not? That is also that's also concerning for me. So I think uh, if you let him go now, see no coach who is coming right now is taking Ghana to the Afro unless Sudan magically loses the two matches. <laughs> And should have done something when it was in your hands yes yeah now it's not in your hands anymore so if you let him go now i think it would just be you are just you are just wasting your case basically and no no sensible coach wants to take that job at this time yeah no no nobody nobody wants to take it so i think at this point you stick with him you have for, no choice for the case of mark ado he brought in chris hutton uh-huh. he brought in otto ado in fact, he no, he brought in. He led the committee yeah, the that committee. brought in. Yeah, Chris Hutton. Yeah, brought Otoado for the yeah. first spell. Brought Otoado for the second spell. Was also the chairman for the Afcon in January that we went to play. Yeah, and then also the World Cup. Oto. All of them complete failures. Otto Hutton back to e. <sighs> no, but you see, if I give you three chances and you your best is Otto Hutton and Otto again, and you're wabong. Yeah, what I mean, seriously? I mean, yeah, I mean it's 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 an indictment on him. Yeah, a very big one, to be honest. It's uh, it's, it doesn't it doesn't uh, look good. But, <laughs> but then again, process is flawed because if if he was given the power to lead a five member committee, he should have made at least three technical heads, three technical heads. Because you see, should have made three. In this type of Instead process, of making one. I, I, and I agree with you 100%. Because, you see, when you're looking for a coach, when, look, that 15 years thing is bogus. It, it, it is immaterial. Mm. A coach can have 40 years experience, be a proven winner, and not be the right coach. for yeah. Ghana in this state, the number one on the list when you're looking for a coach Shouldn't be proven winner and fifty. That that talk of winning Afcon. Yeah, no, you can't even go to knockouts round. You want to win Afcon, and you're looking for a coach. Your first thing is proven winner. No, Mareska is out. Oh yeah, <laughs> look. When <laughs> yeah. there's a reason why Chelsea went for a coach like Mareska. Yeah, you, you are not. You are nowhere near winning trophies at the moment. You need to now build your empire. Yeah. What does Ghana have right now? Yeah. Young players. Yeah. Who need guidance? Are fast, pacey, want to attack. Yeah. Take your DNA, your so-called DNA. Look at the strength of the players that you have. Yeah. And then envision what you want to achieve. Yeah. That is how you choose a coach. Not nonsense, five-pointer, dis- disciplinary and anything. Disciplinary and Notado came first game, three red cards. How does I even, who is a disciplinarian? Tell me, Bill. Who's a, which coach right now said, yeah. how do you even categorize that? Yeah, it, it actually, is all formality. Matro, tro, bro, fu, one, two, three. Uh, d- look, d- this is not what. And you see, until you change the process, we will keep on bringing bombo coaches and we will waste this era that we have. We will waste this generation of young players. Uh-huh. Look, look at how blessed. Look, we, do, you, do you remember yes. the 2021 yeah, Afghan yeah, squad, yeah, Bill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But them so this. Look, at that point, when we got out of the round of 16, I was actually scared. That hey, if these Wakaso boys retire and things, who do we have? That 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 was the only moment that I thought that maybe we actually don't have a future. And somewhere, somehow, the football gods have blessed us with so many talents sprinkled all across the un- the universe, not even the globe. We have we have players in mass yeah, and things. Yeah. All of, if you go and ask, they are from Ghana. Yeah, from Ghana. Look, there are so many, and th- th- there's even a bigger pool of players who are dual nationals. Yeah. Who we can even tap into because yeah. that's not a sin. Yeah. There are Ghanaians that can play for Ghana by the law. You go by the law. Yeah. And we have this good era and we are listing one, two, three, four. 
do, do, do you think that is what the, uh, the, the process is just incredibly flawed and the money ex- uh, the the expenses you remember um when they brought uh, milo back you remember i went back in time to after milo left the first time they had yeah. spent over four million dollars so now imagine the how much package yes now imagine how much more they've spent in addition and you see that fifty thousand dollar that as you say i isn't to save when you look at the money you've wasted on appointing yeah, coaches exactly. yeah, in the see, end you, see, you could you have see. just added some twenty thousand dollars to get a world-class coach yes simple exactly but no, now I need a real figure on how much we Oh, wasted. this time, this time I'll go, I'll go, I'll, 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 I'll take time. Don't worry, I'll take time. We'll go into it. Because you see, in the end, it's oh, becoming see, something. I'll, I'll, we'll go into it. Don't worry. We are losing I'll go way back more. Into it. It's the reason when there'll be a lot now. When people, when people say we have to change everything, build a team for the next six, five oh. years. No, <clears throat> see, we can't waste Kudus Prime. Mm-hmm. Kudus is twenty-four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's one of our most talented footballers in recent years. Yeah. So only played one Afcon. So only played one Afcon. Has Kudus hasn't played a knockout game for the Black Stars yet. Hey, Kudus, is he? Kudus, so Kudus started Travis. playing for Ghana 2019. You've not even given him a knockout game. Yeah, this generation, Travis. we can't waste it. I just feel when this is why this is why when Otto said we are living in the we are stuck in the past and the current generation we can't compare. No. Is absolutely wrong because if you have players playing week in week out, it's this generation. How many players uh, were yeah. playing in the Premier League? I uh, hear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's like I some think, three, four, yeah. five? Yeah. I think. I think that at that time, Muntari, Asian himself, and um, Prince, think, Prince, KP. How did he come to the Premier League? No, then? KP had. KP had came later. It depends on the specific yeah. year. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he came to pass through Portsmouth. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know, but there's. I don't think there's ever been a period where we have seven, eight Ghanaians starting the Premier League. No, I think uh, that no, that that's a bit much. Two, okay, a, so a, so a, a so there was, was a, there was that 2010 11 period where mm. there was Jan, there was uh, Richard Kingston, there was uh, John Mensa, there was uh, okay. ACN himself, there was I think Sule too, as well. No, Sule would have been in Italy by then, no. 2010. 20, yeah, 2010. Yeah, you won, you won the yeah Champions, Champions League. League. Champions League yeah, Italy. Yeah. Okay, so there were like five. Yeah, so seven eights. Yeah, like five. And then you're looking at now it's seven eight. We had, but even then, in, even in, in France, Ligue 1, we have like seven. Recently, yeah. we had you had about ten or eleven. The likes of Amati were all in the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there, there, there's no, you just you can't convince me that okay, we have to change everything, start the play. No, 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 no. Not at all. We have to get the process right. Bring in someone who can get this players playing at the level we expect of. Yeah. Because there's no way you can tell me Salisu is a bad defender. He's not. Salisu how, was how can once someone, he was how once can someone highly make, rated in the Premier League? How can someone make Champions League team of the week? Then next week he can't defend against Sudan. Hey, hey. What, are you, what are you telling me? Travesty. And you see, the point has been made that, yes, the Football Association are not doing their job as people would have expected. But as you mentioned, the power of a good coach can make you forget a lot of things. Yeah. Look, Nigeria FA, what issues have they not had? Argentina, yeah. even Argentina yeah. FA. Yeah. Look, a lot of FAs have had issues so, with so their that, countries. That, that comes to the to the to the supporting cast that I mentioned earlier. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at Scaloni's backroom staff. Yeah. Pablo Aima. Pablo Aima had a stint with the under, and Argentina had a 17 team. Mm-hmm. What Samo has been in and out of the national team. Yeah. And uh, Roberto Ayala. He had a stint with the under 20 team. Yeah. So you could clearly see that there's a process. And you see. For someone like Ayala, he, he had the opportunity to work with these young players who were in, instrumental in, in Argentina winning the World Cup. Yeah. Same applies to Ayala also. So, you see, they, they know the boys right from the onset. But what do we have? <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hmm. being too critical and maybe people will say, no, 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 I'm, I'm no, like, no, I, 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 I hate no, someone. No, 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 no. No, you're not. But let's, let's be fair to ourselves. Even when they appointed CK Akono, who did, we, who did they give CK Akono? David Duncan. That's a top yeah. coach. Yeah, top local coach. Top coach. The, we all praised the last for the under, under 20, under 20 2009 yeah. victory. But who, who brought up most of these boys? David Duncan's. David Duncan's team in 2007. 2017, I, I believe. He yeah. brought up a lot of these guys. And they progressed really well yeah. to the national team 
to the under 20 and they conquer the world yeah you know what i'll let you continue let me just open the phone lines quickly uh, to hear the thoughts of others as well uh, 055 924 0559242717 and so i think we have our first caller on the line hi can you hear me hi hello what? i'm samuel yeah samuel how are you um what do you think the problem is uh why are the players doing well all of a sudden for their clubs what's causing this for you um in my in my view i feel like you see sometimes there's no i feel there's no correlation and coercion between the players and i feel they lack motivation there's no zeal to, you know, ask, um, I think someone said the players aren't really motivated to play for the backstars. And I believe a lot of players on the team who do not really know the meaning of wearing the shirt, the jersey. Unlike then, where wearing that jersey makes you feel proud, like you, you are proud because it's, it's like an achievement. But right now, because of these big money moves, they don't really consider the national team and with the way the national team has fallen from where it was in the 2010s to now. I'm not sure anyone in the national team, unless a few players, are really committed to the team. So you think majority, like 17, 18 players, are not committed to playing for Blasters? That's yes. what you think? Yeah, and also the technical staff, the coach, yeah. his choices are a problem. Like, it's a big problem for the team. And, how, and they don't really know how to utilize the players to their full potential. We, we, get, we have the quality, it's over there, but they are not using them well. It's like how um, Graham Potter was using the Chelsea team. <laughs> our three seasons ago yeah. there was the quality there but the, the the team isn't really playing to its full potential yeah so we need to find a way to get the players to play well and to play with their strength and yeah okay thank you very much uh samo uh for calling uh, what, what we'll do is that let me add another phone number so that uh, you wouldn't have to wait for too long so the first one i mentioned is 055 the second line is 055 and so 055 you can call that one too as well i think we have a caller hi can you hear me yeah, hello, good evening. Good evening, what's your name? Tony. Tony? Yes, sir. Tony, tell me, how come all of, of our players now know how to play football just days after they couldn't score Sudan? It's not that they are not, uh, this group of players are not committed. They don't care about the national team. You no, know, it's all about you, the presenters are part of it. When, when you know how to criticize, that's why you are in the radio presenters, especially the top presenters. Yeah. Look at the way when when the players, some of them are, are playing very well. You guys will be there. We will not mention it. Look at the. Uh, you want to tell me that? Look at our defense. Look at our defenders and look at Baba Rahman. Can you just let Baba Rahman? We will not fix Baba Rahman in this game. And then he said, "Now Baba Rahman, hello." Yeah, I can hear you, Tony. Yeah. Now Baba Rahman is, is not willing to play for the national team again. Why? Because. The criticism is too much. And but but the criticism are, wasn't from the presenters, I'm sorry. Let me I'm correct you. You are the number one. You, the you criticism the was one. not Babaraman's Babara Man's criticism. No, let me correct you. Babara Man's criticism was from the stadium. He quoted he quoted that he doesn't want to play again because he was booed. He was booed by the fans. No, it's not about making a point. It's about stating the facts. Babara Man doesn't want to play for Black Stars because he was booed by the fans. That is a point of correction. Please no, continue. it was because because you 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 were you 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 were the, you the primary player. Some of you incited us as the supporters, as the Ghanaians. The Ghanaians fans that. booed him, so do not exempt fans from this. This was this has nothing and to do with journalists so, and presenters. So, this this squad, the way they play, you won't tell me that Andre Ayuk cannot play this game, this future game, this future game. Yeah. Andre Ayuk. As for, as for that those, idea, I don't those, know. Those, those that are committed to play, you don't encourage them. Those that, look at Kinaki Williams. 
he has played since the World Cup up to now. What are his credentials in the Blasters? They don't play. Look at Pate. Pate, Pate play when he wants to play. Pate <laughs> play when he likes. Pate will just come to the Blaster and play how he likes. You don't talk about that one. You must talk about that one. You know, you know how to get inside the other players too. Yeah, so I, I, the Pate thing, I think, I think we should we should be a bit mindful because I quite remember he he had a he had no, a, I, think, I think I think we lost we Ooh. lost Tony. But oh. wait, but, he, but Tony way, will be listening. The way Tony Tony hits the yeah, yeah but Tony will be listening. But yep. Tony Tony, you came with personal interest. You want Barbara Roman and uh, Andre in the squad? Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so you, but, but but that's not really the question we're asking. Yeah, it's but more. but seeing Pate is not. Party doesn't want to play. He chooses. I don't. I don't think that is true. There were there were instances where he was he was injured. He had just returned to fitness, and he took his personal trainer, a fitness trainer from Arsenal, twice, to the Black Star squad to come and monitor his progress as he please. Twice, twice. You. I think we have another caller. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, I think we lost. Yeah. yeah twice. But, yeah. So uh-huh. so. Th- but this is not an issue of him not being committed or him choosing. See, he is very committed. I think he's very committed to to just recover from injury, not even ha- having played for Arsenal. And you invite one of the fitness trainers of Arsenal to come with you. Eh, the, I mean, the, there was a time during the, the, the camp, I saw him and the trainer. He was, every training session, he was around the team watching party closely making sure that charlie this guy doesn't get injured and all of that if 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 he's not committed enough to want to play you wouldn't bring a trainer to come and watch him he wouldn't so i think i think in this case please let's let's be a bit mindful let's be a bit mindful i think i think going at him in that way you can say maybe performances have been haven't been great and you need to improve but saying that he chooses what time he likes to come to the team I beg you, please. Let's not let's not run that narrative. Look, this this passion commitment talk keeps on dragging. And I'm saying you you mentioned Andrea Yuba, but what, what Andrea Yuba, but when they there when Mozambique knocked us out of the rack, when they are passionate enough to play knockout? Barbara, what are you, Barbara, what are you saying that? Barbara, Barbara was in part of that, of course. No, but go back to whatever tournaments Baba has played. That the Ghana lost. The Ga- Ghana doesn't Who's lose. There? Ghana doesn't lose any match because of passion, my brother. Pas- passion <laughs> commitment. <laughs> What is, it, uh, what is passion uh, commitment? Shango no, also passion. I'm coming. We, no, have, we have a couple of people online. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, please, who's this speaking? This is Ayuki. Frankie. Yeah, Ayuki. Ayuki. Okay, yeah. P- please go on. Do you also think it's passion and commitment? Oh, me, I don't support both. What, but what do you my think? My only advice that if you can help me to reach Otuado, <laughs> you should try and visit the club team. Then, also, the coach, how they are using our players to come and use them over here. Yeah. You see? That's a smart but one. Even, I said that's a smart suggestion. Uh-huh. That, then it will help us a lot. It will help us. Because Otwano is like, they only get time for the players when they come to Ghana. Once you don't know how they are using them there. Look at how they use Mohamed Talisu. Hmm? That's not the way they, they use Talisu over there at Monaco. We have been watching club team football before we have been watching national football team. So, if you can help me to reach Otuado, you should try and be paying them with it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, hi, are you still on the line? Okay, I, th- I think we might have lost. Yeah, Bill. Uh, <laughs> this is no, a, uh, it's, cool. yeah. I, I understand the points the, the callers are making about passion and commitment and all that. I think they want to see more from the players. No, they don't see more. They just want to see the team win. No, no, they want to see more. No, they just want to see the no, team win. We've seen insta- I, look, no. football, football, Rick, football fans seen, only no. just want to see the team win. Yeah, but, but I know. But it's it's we've very... Seen, we've seen... We, we've watched games mm-hmm. that we didn't win. But we were impressed with the level of commitment shown. Like which game? In the national team setup? It's all about winning. No, no. I think even... Ivory Coast, Ivory Coast yeah. were not that good at the half court. They just won. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the yeah. fans so were happy. But the, pl- yeah. the, players, the players wanted it more. Because if they had been knocked out in the group stage, the players were going to take the blame. Perfect example. Oh, the the Ivory Coast is a perfect the example. Going to take the so the, pre, the two games that they had MSN5, MS5 sitting on the bench, he was the assistant coach there. Yeah. 
So they didn't love Ivory Coast then. They didn't have passion in the first two games. All of a sudden, they found passion from nowhere when MS5 came and they won the half court. What yeah. are you telling me? Yeah. That they didn't know they have to love Ivory Coast. They didn't know what it meant to no. host an Afcon. No, yeah. but I'm saying that it is not passion. Hey, bo- hey, me, baby, I'm in bon, I'm in yeah. Just teach them. This play. This is look. Thank you for bringing the Ivory Coast one. That's the perfect no, example. Yeah. The players, Get this passion so, commitment talk. Really? Ivory Coast players were passionate from the beginning of the Afcon. They were just not good enough and well coached in rest to that group stage. That's why they couldn't win. It's not like they're not passionate about Ivory Coast. All of a sudden, knock around, they look different and are passionate. Yeah. No. They were just more organized. That's it. That's football. That's national uh, national team. You can't teach someone to love their country, FC. But Everyone the, loves but, their country. But look, the players wanted it more. Which players? That. But, when, but no. the group stage, they didn't want it more. They, they want, so why were they losing to Ecuador? You saw their the reaction. You were at the stadium. When no. they lost 4-0 to Ecuador, you saw their reaction. They were going to be knocked out no, if they didn't sack their coach. You saw their reaction. Okay, let me ask you this you question. You saw their reaction first. You saw their reaction. But the Black Stars, what was their reaction? When compared they lose to... Compared to uh-huh. these this boys, what, what was the reaction? I, I don't understand. What are you comparing? No, I'm saying compared to... You saw Diakiti. Diakiti broke down. T- he was crying. Ah, I don't understand. No, what's what, See, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't laughing, more. smiling. What, you can't... Laugh, you can't laugh, see, laughing, smiling. See, oh, are you in the Ivory Coast dressing room? We love the, you. Are you, the, are you in the bus of the true. Ivory Coast I, 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 I support your point about system and all that, the technical thing, getting it wrong and everything. But just for the players who also have some balls, they should also show it more. They should play with more passion and more these, commitment. These guys... I've said that. See, you know why I hate I hate this passion comment? No, because I'm, you can't I'm, measure it. No, yeah. I, no you see, you're, you're, you're how do you point. measure someone? So if a player cries, he's passionate. No, he's more passionate than someone who doesn't point, cry. You made a point that you made a point that the players want to win. The players want to win it more for themselves. Of course, but but they've not showed it. How? How? Because after the Afcon, everybody released a statement. Who? And what has happened after the statement? They released, everybody apologized. Ah. What is apology? No, they all apologize. If, you're not good, if, if your team and, is not good enough, and, you're not, you can release see, apology. There's one <laughs> point in every apology, everybody reserved the line saying, we are going to improve. Mm-hmm. We are going to do better. Yeah. We are going to play with more commitment and all that. They promised. It was a pledge. How made. many How many times did Messi have to promise Argentina before he finally won it? <laughs> the promise that you come, if Scaloni didn't come, Manca till date, he still I, promised. But you see, you... You can't measure. Uh-huh. I'm, when, I'm saying. I'm you, saying. You remember Oroku, when Scaloni came Oroku, and then Emi Martinez came? It's all about quality. Oh. No, but I'm saying yeah. national Oroku, team. Oroku, Oroku. Imagine Argentina, Argentina without Emi Martinez Argentina, and Scaloni. Yeah, yeah. Argentina when they were what bad. What is passion? They Argentina didn't have passion. When, Argentina's poor run that we all say they were bad and all that. They were reaching finals back to back. But the pedigree of the country, a country that has produced Maradona, Kempes, and all that, they were winning World Cups. So you for Messi, the standard is to win the World, World Cup. Cup. Yeah, that was the standard. It is the reason we are angry over here. The blaster standard, hundred percent, limited, limited to even this century, is to at least reach a semi-finals of an Afcon. It is yeah. not even that Ghana has to win the Afcon. It's been long. That's what I'm saying. Limited to this century. The, 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 the bare minimum is to reach a semi-finals of an yeah. Afcon. Yeah. And I'm and, tell- you can't and, and I'm telling there. you that since 2019, you have used 66 players. You have used four coaches. You can't tell me all of these guys lack passion and commitment. Yeah. It's just too reduced. No, it, is, it, is, it is too simplistic but if you, to say that if you, these guys lack passion yeah. and commitment. So, at, so in the end, the end to me, if I know we are Ghana, just five years, we can't find a player that loves Ghana. Why? How can you tell me it's about love? But, you know, you know, you That's know, why you're bringing back the love. Also shows in the way you play, right? Yes. Because you, uh, some I, of the chances, that, some of the chances. That's a lead you say they have passion. <laughs> oh no. Of course, of course, yes. <laughs> of course, yes. He, has. Uh-huh. he plays with Let more. Halidu has shown. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the currently, aggression yeah, and all currently, of Currently, our easy. best player in the Blasters right now. It's a lead to say. No, of course. No, I'm coming. Yeah, that's you the see, problem. You that's see, the major problem. You see, you see, that question That question was a trap. You know, yeah. it wasn't a because, trap. Because you see, I know why he said Alidu. Because Alidu is aggressive. Yeah, it's aggressive. Let me compare that. Inaki is the exact opposite. Yeah. Very calm, reserved. So the typical Ghanaian who say he's not committed and passionate. Yeah. If you are watching us right now and you disagree with me that Inaki is not passionate and he doesn't have commitment, go on your phone. Watch that last minute goal that he scored. Yeah. yeah the yeah. header. Yeah. Look at how he celebrated that goal and tell me that guy is not passionate about playing for Ghana and doesn't want to score more. Google, you think he doesn't want... No, also you, Google, also no Google, you also, think that guy doesn't want to Google, score more? Also Google. Inaki uh-huh. yeah. after Super Cup, Spanish Super Cup. Uh-huh. Inaki's reaction after they lost, they lost to. But so I think Real Madrid or one of those Super Cup. Yeah. Super Cup that is. is but Inaki has cried. 
He cried after the AFCON. I saw him outside the stadium. He cried. So what are you saying? <laughs> he cried. He was one of the few players that cried. His eyes were red. Mix zone, his eyes were red. Oh. No, but you see, you cannot tell me that this guy, I would never believe it. No, but when he scored the goal, look at him there. Yeah, and the, yeah. the, 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 the guy wanted to take off his shirt. He wanted to enter the crowd, was hugging come. He was happy because he lo- look, he chose to play for Ghana because he wants to play for Ghana. Nobody forced him. Yeah. So, there, but there should be a, some level of consistency. That, you see, that's the because, conversation we must so, have. Because yeah. after, after this game, only one person has apologized. Kudus. Yes. I mean, it's on behalf of the team. He said on behalf of the, the team. team. That's, that's, no. See, Captain. I'm, I'm saying that. We don't want to read plenty English. Right? If, no, no, no. Oh, no. The 23. I, see, <laughs> ca- Captain, Captain. Kudus <laughs> issued an apology. And do you know what I did that night? Mm. I was just going, going through, the, through the Instagram comments and I saw the players. They were agreeing. Fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> What stops you from also coming out to say, oh, we are sorry, blah, blah. Because see, failing <laughs> to qualify for an AFCON is it's a, it's a real, it's a huge indictment. We are us. waiting for when we don't qualify. We all drop statement. Yeah, but probably. it's good you mentioned Kudus. The, the red card, where, where did, do, do you think... He's frustrated. Where is the frustration so he, I, I think he's frustrated with the... It's, it's, that one is clearly Western problem. I don't, don't think don't, he, he, I think the national team also... No, no, no. no, no I, don't, I, don't, compounded. I, don't think, I don't think he carried the national team bed into the, to the game. Because when he started the game, you saw you saw his performance, right? Yeah. It was it's just a clear frustration of West Ham system and uh, the way just they concede, yeah. the way they yeah. concede, the way even the likes of Boeing. You see, you brought in all these players, and still Mikel Antonio is is one is your top striker, <laughs> and yeah, Susa is strange. in the middle. It's strange, you see. Yeah, all this, strange. I just feel they 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 wanted to see some beautiful football because if you sat David Moyes yeah and you yeah, that's why you're a former Real Madrid yeah. coach you're communicating that you want to play good football yeah and you want to make the likes of Pac- you have talent the talent yeah. is there so I think Kudus is frustrated because he doesn't understand how a team that has Paqueta Bowen yeah. himself yeah. Guido Rod- Rodriguez yeah. should be should always be at the back foot even when they are playing Chelsea at home. Ah, what do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> they are always at the back foot. And these are players who want more of the ball. They want yeah. to see more possession. And they, they want to play. They want to have a feel of the ball more. So if they are not, they are not having it, they clearly grow frustrated. Yeah. In, the, in the first half, I was watching the game. In the first half, Kudus, I think Kudus tracked back. Mm-hmm. Kudus tracked back. And he managed to help Wambisaka win the ball. And just Wambisaka had a simple task to just pass the ball to Kudusu. He just gave the ball to the open. And Kudus stopped. He stopped running. He, he didn't do anything. And that that led to a chance that Son Human nearly scored. So I just feel it just, the frustration is just for him for club football, it's just at West Ham. And I, I, I feel with time they're they going to get rid of Lepetegui because it's, it's not working. Were you surprised by Kudus' actions? Very. Because. He's only gotten a red card once before, and I don't even remember what led to the red card. But that aside, to to slap Van de Ven and to also go at Pape Matasia like that. Why? Oh, your fellow African brother. No, why? No, why? I don't know. I don't know what happened yesterday because when I was watching the game, I was just going through Snapchat, and I saw a video that one of West Ham's old matches there, and let's say there was an altercation. The players were all in the middle and. The guy was recording his guy and he said, Ah, Nima boy no on Kubiana. He said, Kudus on Kubiana. Meaning he wasn't like, there. Some. Ten minutes later, this happened and Kudus was throwing his ass. I was like, Ah, what? <laughs> such, a, such a coincidence. But I feel it's, it's, it's really a low blow for him because you saw his reaction when he was sent off. He, he felt really disappointed and let down. He let his team down. Yeah. And right now, I'm hearing the band could be extended. More than a few matches. Yes. <laughs> and look, I for me when a and player it could be a huge blow for him because I'm I'm not even looking at this season for Kudus. Yeah, players make mistakes. You yeah. can get red cards for bad tackles and all of that. Yeah. I'm okay with having a high foot. Yeah. A shoulder. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something concerning football and getting a red card yeah. for it. But that was But d- these type of things, it takes a lot to erase them off your C V. Yeah. If you want to erase this moment now you have to come back and have the season of your life. Yeah. I say this because obviously Kudus' ambition or end goal is not at West Ham. Of course. If you want to play for a Real Madrid, a Barcelona, a Liverpool, and Arsenal, footage. it's not just about how good you are as a footballer. 
is the nitty gritties. Yeah. That's why there are a lot of talented footballers that never get to play for big clubs. Yeah. It's all about how you react in certain situations. Because yeah. imagine when you join these big clubs, you would have to go through this a lot more often. Your temperament is not even how you react to anger. It's about how you react to situations, pressure, playing at the Benabao, yeah. playing a Champions League final. You cannot afford to lose your head like this. Yeah. And um, I, for me, I was just a bit disappointed. Not because it happened, but in the manner in which it happened. Yeah. Once, twice, thrice. Nah, I just, I just think that's, that's, that's one too many. Oh, he's going to learn. I, I feel... Yeah, no, 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 no. It's no, not it's about not. he's going to learn. It was extremely bad. It was very... It was... Look, no, but it, so, some, th- some things... Yeah, like... Have you, have you seen Messi or anybody reacting Messi, that way? Yeah, yeah. Like, during a match, slap someone three times, kick someone... He didn't, three, he didn't it, slap, but he it, also got a red card. Yeah, people get red cards. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's, been, just, he's been in stuff with Medel. Yeah, like yeah, Copa America. But the way he did it, kick twice... At, it's almost like... The, the aggression is compounded. And that's why I want to believe that it's not just West Ham. It's so, something more. So, maybe, yeah, so probably. let's say, are you, are you going to believe the report that he had, he had, he had a clash with Lopetegui? Because I just feel... At half time. Yeah, half I, just time. I, I think perhaps this one sort of validates in a way. Yeah. Because the, the frustration had... had but you see, point. for me, it doesn't help. Because red cards are very, very... De- Look, when you are a footballer on the bench... You don't want to pray for an injury for, uh, for you to get an opportunity. Yeah. But if someone gets a red card, at least you get a chance. The player is not hurt. Their yeah. health is intact. Yeah. So let me give you a situation right now. What if Soler comes into the team or Somerville comes into the team and in those three, four games that Kudus is absent, West Ham win all those games oh. with a goal difference of 15 and don't concede. But it's still, it's still if Kudus comes back, do you think he will start? He's still, no. he's still going to start. No, he no. won't. No, no, I, if I they put it together. No, and you see, that, that's the danger no, about... I, Kudus, no, see, Kudus' case is different. We, we, we have to be fair. No, we have I'm, to understand that. No, I'm just giving he's, a hypothetical he's, situation he's a, here. He's a West Ham project. I understand. There's no way he's going to be on the bench. No, I'm I'm giving you a very hypothetical. If, you, if I, you are Lopetegui, no, okay, let me correct, direct. Let me direct it to you. The reason is he's not being played in his natural position. No, but let me give you, let me give you this scenario right now. As a coach, you are Lopetegui. You play Man United. You play all of these games after Kudus is missing. You bring some of those the left left wing, Bowen right, Paqueta ten, Antonio, and all of a sudden this front four clicks and they start scoring and they win the games. It will be a bit unusual for... Yeah, you see, so the reasonable thing to do is to stick with your winning team. Yes. But, it, but it's, it's different here. Yeah. How is it different? As a coach, you can't... You, you, know, you know what you... you Lopetegui clearly knows, know what he walked into. In this case, you can't continue playing your winning team because you, have to, you always have to make way for the star boy. But for me, that's the danger of a record. For the, for the project player, for the, the player who, who has been brought in for huge money and the club wants to sell him off for what is really close, he's really co- close for 100 million pounds or something like that. So I just feel, if, what, no matter what happens, I just feel he's going to come back stronger. He's going to come back into the team. Maybe come from the bench for the first two or three games after the suspension is over. And he's going to, with time, he's going to settle. He's going to, he's going to get back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand your frustration. I understand you are disappointed and all that. But it happens. It's, it's, it's part of football. He wasn't getting more of the ball. And you see, that's what I'm saying. The, the, the profile of Kudus, the type of player he is, I'm not sure he's been in a team that are so negative. And you see, we, 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 were, we were very... We were raising this point when he was going to join Moise. And he was seeing more of the ball during <laughs> Moise time. It's and for someone like funny. the Portuguese who's who's known for brilliant football, who's known for p- more possessive, possession-based football during this time with Spain, Real Madrid, and all that. It's, it's, it's a huge disaster what he has turned West Ham into. West Ham can't even string four or five passes together. Yesterday, I was watching the game. It was a complete dominance by Spurs. And if Spurs is dominating you, then there's a problem. I think, yeah... Because you can't take away the fact that when he was at Ajax, he was playing a champion, like yeah. Champions League football. And that's what every, every player dreams of. You want to play in the Champions League. At this moment, Champions League looks like a very, in very Europa far... League. Yeah, Europa League looks like a distant dream for West Ham. They probably have to think about their Premier League status first. 
<laughs> but yeah, let's let's talk about you know the the the, the Premier League. Um, Arsenal dropping points, Liverpool winning at home. Maybe not the best performance, but getting in the points. Man City also struggling in front of goal. Has this weekend for you given you any further idea on the title race and how you think it would go, given the results that we witnessed? Yeah, I, I feel Liverpool cannot be underestimated. I watched their Premier League prediction and you, you were bold enough to put Liverpool. I was skeptical at that point because I was like, Ancelot coming in this first season is going to struggle. But one thing that we forgot was that Liverpool didn't lose any key player. They kept the core of the team. Salah is available, Van Dijk is available, there's Luis Diaz on the flanks, Jota. All these players are available. And these players have won it. They've won the Premier League before. They were key in Liverpool winning for the first time in over two decades. So there was no way we could have easily ruled them out. And even if we, are, if we were being fair in our analysis prior to the start of the season, last season, they were, it was a three-horse race at some point. And they had a shout for it. So I just feel, for now, it's looking like a two-horse race. Arsenal are beginning to be inconsistent. For, for, because if you look at their performances, it's either someone is being sent off or there's a... They, 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 the lack of discipline is going to affect them. The red cards are Yeah, the red much. cards are yeah, surprising. Yeah. Because we've seen this in Saliba's first red card in his career, we've seen Declan Rice pick up a red card, Trostad has picked up a red card. And they are not addressing the issue. They feel, Arsenal fans feel there's there, there an agenda, agenda, against, agenda them. against them. But Trostad's red card was a clear red card. Rice's red card was also a red card. And Saliba's score was right. So I just feel they have to focus on the football and get their players to be disciplined. The more they, they shift the blame on the, the referees, by the time they realize City <laughs> and Liverpool are far gone. I think right now it's four points and they yeah, face Liverpool points. next. If they lose... That's a difficult game. If they, they lose, lose that's yeah. seven points. and <laughs> That's a bit too much. When you are seven points adrift at the top, it's too much at this time, yeah. because we all know how the teams are playing. And Liverpool, after beating Chelsea, they feel, okay, we are up there. If they beat Arsenal, they'll be more confident. Yeah. And mm-hmm. all they have to do with City is just manage them, maybe... Be, win at Anfield, which they, they know how to do best, and get a point at ETR, which they also know how to do best. So, for, for, for currently, the momentum is clearly on the side of Liverpool. Manchester City are struggling. They, they have not replaced Rodri. Rodri is fantastic. He shows the back four really well and all that. Kovacic has come in, and Kovacic is a completely different player. His profile is different from that of Rodri. And you can clearly see that they are struggling to to get Kovacic to play like Rodri. You, you can't get him to play like Rodri. So there's a clear miscommunication sometimes when they are playing. And Gundogan is also not playing at his best. So for Manchester City, they are just hanging on. If you look at Pep Guardiola's reaction to the, the last minute goal they scored today, he, I, I just feel he understands at this, at this point we are not in our best shape. But we have, to, we have to still be close to the title race. And maybe in the last 15 or 17 games, which is we all know how City do it, they can they get into their stride and push more for the for, for more wins and get to win the title. So I, th- I think City are just hanging on and with time they're gonna get better. But if they also lose focus like the way Arsenal are trying to lose focus, <laughs> Liverpool run away with the title. <laughs> um well, a joyous end to the season that will be for the Reds. Uh, but that's how we'll be wrapping up today's edition of Sports Ultras live here on TFM ninety-two point seven. Uh, we'll be bringing you more sports updates as well on our social media handles at 3 Sports GH. Special thanks to Bill and then Epson for joining me in studio. And also a very, very, very big thank you to all of those of you who called us uh, to share your opinions as well on the Black Stars. Uh, we would continue to bring you the latest uh, in the world of sports next week, Sunday at 6 p.m. So do make sure to tune in uh, for some very good opinions and interesting discussions and analysis on the trending issues, uh, especially when it comes to sports. My name is Ray Kwampofu, and we'll be back again next week, Sunday. <laughs>